All right, so this is a very quick overview of the positions of the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists going into the period of constitutional ratification. In 1787, the Constitutional Convention met in Philadelphia between May and September. Now, initially, this was just supposed to be a meeting to talk about tweaks or amendments to the Articles of Confederation. But what quickly happened is that a group of men led by predominantly James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay, although they did have George Washington on their side as well for significant moral support, these men determined that the Articles of Confederation could never be tweaked enough to make them useful. Together, these men, along with a bunch of others, are going to form what's called the Federalist Party. Now, it's just important to remember because I'm going to come back later on and talk more about the Constitutional Convention. When we look at the parts of the Constitution and the aim of each one of them, but at this point, just understand that there was no mandate. There was really no reason for these delegates to be able to scrap the entire Articles of Confederation. Technically, the Articles themselves required unanimous support in order for any amendments to be passed. But as we'll see, that's not what's going to happen. Out of the Constitutional Convention emerge two key parties, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. They couldn't come up with a cool name. In a nutshell, the Federalists are the group who want a strong federal central government. They're not looking to completely eliminate state authority, but seek more of a balance between an organized government centered somewhere and smaller state governments, each of which have their own powers. The anti-federalists essentially only agree on one thing. That is that they oppose the federalists. Beyond that, this is a coalition group that each has its own interests. The anti-federalists want to continue the model of government under the Articles of Confederation, that is, strong state and local governments with a weak national government that can do very little. Another key difference between these two groups, at least initially, is that while the anti-federalists believe that individual rights can only be protected if there's a bill of rights specifying the rights that citizens have, the Federalists, at least initially, believe that that is unnecessary, that a federal government exists to protect minority rights, and therefore a Bill of Rights is not needed. We'll see those positions meld a little bit as we get into the actual campaigning process. The key leader of the Federalist Party is Alexander Hamilton, though, as I mentioned, James Madison and John Jay are also in there. The most important anti-federalist by far is George Mason from Virginia. He is going to tether his wagon firmly to the Bill of Rights. And as we'll see, the Federalists will ultimately accede to that concept. Now, these two parties are going to campaign because the state legislatures have to individually vote on the new constitutional government. And it is decided that three-fourths of all the state governments have to vote in favor of the Constitution, at which time it will become binding on the states as a whole. So that's a big change from the Articles of Confederation right there. Instead of unanimous, all the states need to do is three quarters. So those are the two parties, and those are their positions going into the ratification period that we'll take a better look at in a little bit.